Well done. We have completed Valhalla. Another Halloween, another new adventure game. Though this year is different in that it could be a one-time show. Getting this version made into a cut where the back-end robots didn't yell at it was already an ordeal. So if you're seeing this during the premiere, or the Patreon watch page, or some third-party website, that's why this video may have vanished or be slightly different than the one on the main channel. It was not a smooth process, and this is more like the Flavor Flav Night Tales of the adventure game videos. So with that answered, what the hell is Ring? Put simply, it's an adaptation of Der Ring des Nibelungen. No Sadako here. It's an opera, though he'd prefer the term musical drama, by Richard Wagner. It's a cozy little production that clocks in at about 15 hours. It's usually performed over four nights so that the audience can actually survive it. If you thought Les Mis was long, welcome to Germany. It is, in every sense of the term, a national epic. So in 1997, a company founded by two Slovenian architects decided to make it into a game. It would be published by a French company, Cryo Interactive, and the team included the renowned French artist, Philippe Doyer. If you haven't heard of him, the dude is particularly a legend in comic books. He frequently uses bold, striking colors, and his work is surreal but endlessly detailed. So for giving a fantasy epic like Ring some flavor, he's not a bad choice. Though if you have heard of him, you know he's more famous for his sci-fi art. Well, this adaptation would be a sci-fi one. Ring would take place in the far future of 40k. No, pardon me, 40c. The idea was that the story of the Ring cycle is just so timeless it can surely fit into any setting, so there's no need to get into the original for now. Boy, will he. The game is currently abandoned where, and to be able to play and record it, I had to reinstall my operating system. It won't work if certain NVIDIA drivers are installed, or a lot of other mystery things, really. For some reason, the game wasn't supported much, and most reviews I can find of it said it was very, very bad. IGN gave it a 2.7 out of 10, though GameSpot was more generous and gave it a 3.7 out of 10. Now these aren't great signs, but they did say the story can stand on its own. I can maybe agree that the game has a story. Sort of. Okay, let me start the game. There should be enough of a... Oh, we're here. Um, a cutscene is supposed to play there, but it doesn't, so I had to go hunt it down. I have been known by many names. Messiah. Emperor. Thanos. He says he's a god and hero and wants to tell his story. This seems like it should be important, but we'll see how it goes. You're flashbacked into his past to see his adventure, which he tells you is also your adventure. <laughs> Come hither, my child. Enter. Become the Earth's child again, Ish. Ish? This task is your path. As old as the world itself. Perhaps even older. It depends on the age that we bestow upon the gods. The great adventure ends up being Ish entombing himself inside of a mummy returns prop. In order to save mankind, he must unravel the secrets of the ring play, because the story is one of mankind's greatest creations. I... Drill? Your Majesty! Oh, Get to God. Work. Yes, Your Majesty! It can't sound like that the whole game. Not like that, Drill. Panoramic. Ouch! Oh, sorry, I'm a bit r rusty. There, Ish. I have returned eye and arm to you. Now you can set off. But do not worry, I shall escort you. Okay, now we're all caught up. It is odd that the Eldritch Sarcophagus doesn't plug him into the Matrix, but instead just controls an RC claptrap. But you're now free to wander this asteroid, space station, amphitheater. There are statues you can interact with that give you more information about the characters in the story, but none about the current setting. It is peaceful to explore here, you're just listening to nice Wagner music, and the narration is being done by award-winning actress Charlotte Rampling. The early head set out to make something classy and cultured. She now has to discover those of freedom. The fuck? What's with the artillery strikes? That he was himself wanted as a weapon in the, on the symbol of the new order. There's no battle I can see. Like, who's being shelled by the... <laughs> to this day, I have not found an explanation. It could represent a galactic war, and that's what makes Ish's adventure so important. Or something like that. 
Or it could be like the Citizen Kane parrot that's supposed to shriek you back awake. Except Rain delivers that trick every 45 seconds directly above ground for maximum impact. The Rhine Maiden's gold was sleeping at the heart of the eternal mists. This is fine anyways because it's an absolute exposition dump. You get backstories for all kinds of characters because there are four stories to play, and you can play them at any time. So it can't take into account how relevant something will be in that very moment. With that in mind, our first character is Alberic, or Alberish, or Alberich. The game uses all kinds of names for each character. Sometimes it's the original German names for the Norse characters, sometimes it's just the Norse characters, and sometimes it's a translation from who knows where. So Alberic is the king of the dwarves, and as spiteful as you'd expect. He's preparing for revenge against the gods, so we'll start with him. Alright, got the Fisher Price Myth Selector. Let's go. Ah, your Majesty! My brother! Uh, I see you have returned! Now, the, the, the mine, the, the Nibelungen, well, it's, it's not my fault. If it, they, they, they've all gone. Uh, you, you must do something! After all, you, you are the king, uh, and this, this I told them. Yeah, they're, they're all gone. Boof. Have you ever heard someone speaking, and the way they say something is so bizarre it just skips over the part of your brain that processes it? Ring has a few examples of those, and somehow this dude isn't the best at it. Uh, uh, look, a uh, glug uh, or a uh, proof of of my good faith. I... What? Your good faith? <laughs> My dear meme. Fear. Repression. These are the words that are music to my ears. There's so much to unpack already. Why is Glug tribute? And what is Glug? It kind of looks like the Dungeon Keeper cover. Now, what am I supposed to do with your ludicrous toys? If you notice the endgame subtitles being off or not matching the audio, that's in the game itself. You learn that Glug is for the motorbike and can explore around his Albrecht a bit. There is an item panel like many adventure games, and you have Brutality, Glug, and the Ore. There's not much to do in the Forge yet, but Albrecht can tear Meme's ass apart for daring to own a decoration. An ornament? <laughs> Here in the foul, stinking, half-dark of your forge? Oh, have you suddenly acquired a taste for beauty? You, a squat, moldy, and groveling toad in this palace of hags. Yeah, I wouldn't know what to say either. Well, he wants to keep it, and this is where brutality comes in. Angry! You're the king! Take your piece of glass! I feel like Albrecht wouldn't be satisfied with this, and the game does too, because he can't hit him more. Ow! Oh! Why are you hitting me? Because I like it, you slimy gutter dwarf. Because it is my good pleasure, you rotten little cabbage. Because it pleases me, you worthless prince of slime. The Wagner music is nice, but out of place and looped in a really psychotic way. Unfortunately, I can't demonstrate that much on YouTube, since there are about 500 different people who want to claim the music as their own. So if things seem disjointed, or a part gets muted, or the video itself disappears, you'll know why. Anyhow, Albrecht also collects the Tear of Log, though you might know him better as Loki. It's heated forever and will always evaporate water that touches it, meaning it's effectively a nuclear reactor. Our Dwarf King is going to need it for something deeper in the mine. It's not a Mercedes, but it is a motorbike. And you power it with... not the energy source. Then you remember that this is what Glug was for, though you have to click in the exact magical spot like you'd expect. Among the industry's most innovative and feature a particularly fluid and dynamic interactive software engine, offering unprecedented immersion, both visual and emotional. You throw minerals for Glug, he eats them, and that makes the motorbike go. You might be wondering, and no, Glug is not in the original opera, but maybe he should be. Alberic makes his rounds traveling Nibelheim, which is awkward to navigate. You would think that you would only need to click again when there's a fork in the path and you need to choose a way, but instead you frequently need to click again just to keep going. 
It is safe to say that Philippe really went to work on the designs. It didn't translate too well to character models in 1998, but the environments definitely still hold up. Though one of the locations you can visit has what looks like a space marine drinking out of a giant straw. But remember, 40C, not 40K. There's nothing to do here yet anyways, so you can get back on your bike, and Glug will need the minerals every time you turn it back on. <laughs> on the other side of the kingdom, you can visit Albrecht's control center. He's looking to get production back in order and has something nefarious in mind. The motorcycle won't take you directly to his lair. You'll have to ride his Daedric Secret Lab gaming chair to get up into it. This pleases him. Pum, 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 pum. It turns out Meme's ornament did have a use, as it fits into a puzzle. Each panel tells a history of the god Votan, or Odin. It talks about how he desired to rule the world, and then did so. When you solve that, you can activate the computer, though it's undergoing some technical issues. Elbrick fixes it with his trusty five-finger solution. The map is now active, and presumably, the system's back online. From here, it should be easy going into the storage room. I guess not. The first time I played this game, I couldn't actually save it because it was broken. It's not a huge deal now, but I still feel something bursts in my chest when I see that endgame screen. What you need to do is move the tunnel around. That way you won't be aircraft catapulted into the wall. Now that you're not pulverized down into salted pork, you can get your stuff. A few of the vaults next to the big egg are empty, so you'll need to look around carefully. Actually, only one locker has an item, a diving helmet. It's the big egg that contains the anti-gravity gel you need. You don't know what it's for. With that done, you can head back up. Just make sure to put the pipe back into place and flood the antechamber on the other side of Nibelheim. This is critical to the plan, and so is... the meme frog. That was pleasant. Now the magic frog lets Albrecht breathe underwater. Ring makes me wonder, was the audio made for humans? <laughs> The actual music and effect sound peaks can get astoundingly high, and there's no way to just turn off the music, which would have made my life much easier. If you don't go directly back to the pipe chamber, you can learn a bit more about why the factory is not working. Why don't you come on up and see me? We have much need to talk a while with you. Of course, sir. I'll get into the lift and you can bring me up. You have to be careful not to pancake him with the lever. And then the dwarf will explain what's actually happening. The kingdom is shut down and not producing anything because the dwarves have formed a union and are now on strike. Albrecht's about ready to murder him on hearing this, but wants them all to come back to work. And it just goes to show that work organized on ideals of fairness and mutual effort would appear to be just as productive as your, how can I say this, more kingly methods. I want you to work for me again. You do? Oh, I am honored. However, I do foresee two problems. Firstly, nothing in your kingdom works anymore. And secondly, I don't see how it would benefit us. In short, what I mean to say is, let's be honest, not a chance. I think you're going to change your mind. Albrecht's voice acting is fantastic. He's so thrilled to be evil when he has power, and just so bitter when he doesn't. But it's his upcoming segment that seals it for me. You equip the diving helmet, and go into the chamber you flooded earlier. If you don't click the helmet first, you just die. If you do... There's nowhere to actually swim to. Sisters, listen, an ode to the Rhine, and one for Wotan, our father, for having entrusted us with such a delightful mission. Frolicking all day long in the ever-changing waters, and guarding a sacred treasure. The treasure is brilliant, spectacular gold. The gold is so spectacular that it can be forged into a ring that will grant the power to rule the world. It's even beyond that. It'll grant absolute power. Votan has told them to lure away or distract anyone who comes too close, but unfortunately for them, they're dealing with Alberic. Poor little fish. You think I find your advances irresistible? No. 
Go instead and sing your desires to the salmon and the trout. For blowing off each of the Rain Maidens, Albrecht gets a new key, and then he surfs away. You go through this a few times. Elusive as the river, deceptive as a woman. A dwarf I may be, yet I am not fool enough to be caught in your net. Come, drink peace, happiness, and oblivion from my breast. I have no taste for peace and happiness. And as for oblivion, my little fishy, <laughs> you're already history. Fuck off, I hate being happy. The anti-gravity boots let you fly up, but the no-clipping, I have no idea, it's like a playable YouTube poop. After dealing with the fish in the sea, Albrecht must endure the Halls of Torment. They might not actually be called that, but it's what they feel like. The environment can be really cool in these sections, but the puzzles become nonsense. Not that our standard was high before, but now you grab a fish and put it in another tank, and then a dolphin eats it, which is actually another Rhine Maiden, and this leads to playing hot potato with a medallion for multiple sections. One will give you a medallion as a gift, and then you give it back, and then they say you deserve it, but then someone else needs the medallion, so it keeps going all over the place. Sometimes you click water and a fish lady comes out, Sometimes you instantly drown. It's one of those classic adventure game moments where doing the exact same thing gets you killed. Do it right and you won't drown, or be murdered by the haunted arms. There's a lot to get past in this section, but Albrecht's musings do make it entertaining. Trust is the weak man's favorite excuse. I am a conqueror, not a beggar of human charity. I choose to be rich and warm, a condition which better suits my royal nature. What's weird is the Maidens want him to demonstrate all kinds of qualities, and he could just brush past them, and then he usually dies. Instead, he performs the good deed, they say why that's good, and then he says it's all bullshit. Well, on this point I must agree. Sacrifice is indeed a noble thing. In fact, without a moment's regret, I would sacrifice all those who stand in my way. Elbrick is quickly moving up my list of villains as he gets closer to the gold. There is an option to choose love or virtue or something like that, but it is treated as a game over, which is appropriate for Elbrick. Of course, you can just die here again if you forget to use your diving helmet. As for the good ending, it sure looks like another one where he drowned. So let them sing to the salmon and the trout, and get the gold. Well, here is the gold, you walking disaster. <laughs> it wasn't that difficult. Now, open your ears, and gather your few remaining wits about you. You must forge a ring, and a crown, in accordance with my precise instructions. <laughs> the world is mine. The Nibelungans, my slaves! <laughs> nah, you and Glug have to take a final trip to the Astartes Chamber. Now Log's tier can be used to power up the factory again, and the ring lets him rule over everyone. This could go a few different- What have you learned, my Fuck. son? I have learned that desire is a cruel mistress. I've seen a man renounce love for gold. And why did he so desire this gold? So Ish gets a little, what was that all about, lesson, and then it becomes a Heaven's Gate manifesto. At the dawn of the 21st century, the nine forms of intelligent life in the universe came into contact with each other. This was to be the second great upheaval in human history. Greed very soon held sway over curiosity, and a war like no other began. They fought for power, riches, and space, which was nevertheless infinite. Soon, the four most powerful warmongers formed a deadly alliance. Humans were on the defeated side. It may surprise you to learn that this intergalactic war and history, it all goes nowhere. This is brain poison. Learning it can only hurt you. This also makes the framing even more nonsensical. If Ish is in the future, you know, and it's like a sci-fi setting for us, if he's learning about the ring cycle, shouldn't it be a normal fantasy kind of setting? Like the actual Matrix is in the past, or, you know, a video game. The sci-fi elements have nothing to do with the actual stories being told. They're used for puzzles, but other than that, completely superficial. You could argue they're showing Ish a world more familiar to him so it's not too alien and he can understand it. I don't think so. At this point, I'm convinced it's a torture device. Did they really think Glug was like Microsoft Clippy? No. 
Does this device look anything but evil? No! They're trying to kill me. Personally, you can follow the general gist of the story for now. The actual opera, but the deep lore? Absolutely not. This would be like if I asked you to watch Fellowship of the Ring, asked how you liked it, and then went, oh yeah, it's just like how we're fighting the greys and reptilians. And Legolas knows the earth is flat. That's also true, my son. It makes the whole experience so confusing. All I can do for now is spin the wheel of madness and move on to Log. Laga, Loga, Loki, it doesn't matter. My setup really doesn't like that engine sound, but maybe it runs better on yours. Voten. We have completed Valhalla. Alright, so they don't clearly explain what's happening here, but the original story does. These two Transformers are the giants Fasolt and Fafner. They were contracted to build Valhalla for the gods, being offered Votan's sister-in-law Freya as payment. Now that they're done, Votan is getting cold feet about the deal. It's just they're playing the scene without any setup to it, so it looks like nonsense. Freya, sweet Freya. Ugh. Freya with her generous hands, to whom we return each day in search of our immortality. I cannot abandon her. The lack of music makes this whole scene extra surreal. Like shoving a frog into diving equipment was worthy of music, but this doesn't make the cut. You just hear Starscream and his brother mad about their payment plan. We shall keep Freya. The gold, Votan. The gold may be our only salvation. Fuck it. Alberic has stolen it and forged the ring. I have learned that since then, he has been hoarding countless riches in the gloom of Nibelheim. Your labor has been immense. Your rewards shall be infinite. I am not offering you gold, but rather its inexhaustible source. You must accept this price. We have learned to mistrust you, Botan. When we see the gold, and if it is as inexhaustible as you say, then we shall return Freya to you. Logger, my loyal advisor, return to Nibelheim. Seize gold and ring from the dwarf's filthy hands. Once again, I shall oppose the giants. You go down into the mine and take care of that rat. This is where hell begins. Hop! Who goes there? The mine is closed, so no visitors are allowed down here. No entry, that's right, no entry. So don't you come any further. So I am, at the moment, working on something that is very, very precious. So I'm about to retreat. The music loops like this, throughout Laga's entire story. It keeps looping and building back on itself to a crescendo that never comes. This talk with Meme goes on forever too, he just wants to see Alberic. Meme explains that Alberic has been working everyone to the bone and is now a powerful sorcerer. He's created effigies that make scary things appear, or something like that, and that's how he keeps control. He's so terrifyingly good, you know what I mean? Terrifyingly good! It's five minutes of this and nearly impossible to retain any of it, Meme mentions there's also a transformation material somewhere that could help you out. We'll see. Now you get to explore Nibelheim again. Put your backs into it, you processionary pigs! Elberic has a lot of different lines for screaming at the dwarves. Work, you repugnant regurgitation from the throat of a old and ugly mother-in-law! <laughs> you evolutionary rejects! You have no right to exist! Make yourself useful, at least! Gravel, you spineless hunchback! The man takes so much joy in his work. Now you need to hunt down his effigies, and his gaming lair seems like the best place to check. You've got
got to do some puzzle nonsense again, but can break into the vault after that. Unlike last time where it was mostly empty, there are three effigies here, along with a strange material instead of the anti-gravity yogurt. When that's done, you've got all you need to explore the other side of Nibelheim. It is kind of interesting that Logi surfs around too, but through the air. I'm gonna guess the surfing was saving a lot of animation time. This is where you discover the Volus torture chamber, and what I see when I can't sleep at night. You have to talk to the Scotchy Moochy Volus, and it is designed to make you crazy. It feels like he contains the activation switch for taking out some politician somewhere. It is a seven minute tirade about dwarves, and I don't know. The delivery, the way the music loops over it. Let me give you just a little bit. I've devoted my life to them and did what I could to get them to rebel, but in vain. To them, I am just a freak to be laughed at during the break time. They've been over backwards to protect that megalomaniac creep. You won't even be... You won't even be able to get close to him. The only solution is to kill him, kill him, kill him all. Doesn't that just make your ears sing? The voice always changing, the music endlessly looping, for seven minutes. This legitimately might have been done in one take. I'll leave a link to the full scene if you want to see how long you can last. From what I can make out, he says the dwarves still near Albrecht are a lost cause and deserve genocide. Redirecting that water from earlier could cleanse this place from sin. Since he delivered this information like a crazy man trying to impersonate the master from Fallout single-handedly, I think he deserves to be the first to join the new world. The scene cuts are so abrupt, it's like, it feels like being shocked back to life or something. It doesn't matter. Let the river flow. My dwarfs! My Nibelungen! He's killed my dwarfs! It can't be! All my dwarfs! All my little dwarfs! Oh, what am I supposed to do now, mister? I kill everyone and it doesn't stop me from having a blast? Huh? What am I going to do without the dwarfs? One little dwarf, just a small one. Oh god, they're all small. All right, a teeny tiny one. Oh, my kingdom for a dwarf. After the Pocket Prince purging, you can confront Albrecht, and it is a doozy. In the original story, Albrecht gets tricked, and here it's something else entirely. Well, well, well. Votan has sent me his cherished butt. <laughs> Let's face facts, mongrel. Yes, Votan is a god, the god of gods, even. But what you see, I'm the dwarf of dwarves. The biggest of the smallest, and by far the most vicious, brutal, cruel, sadistic, and dangerous creature under five feet tall that you've ever had the displeasure of meeting. Imagine how much confidence someone has to have to announce that they're under five feet as part of their threat. Loki is here under the order of the god of gods, and Albrecht could not give a single fuck. After some more surfing, Log explains the nature of order, and gives an entire monologue about his perspective of how things go. Loga's performance is also very good, and his cold, calculating demeanor is a perfect contrast for Alberic. Alberic's not too bothered by the threats or even the genocide. Instead, he's the most offended by how long Loga's speech is taking. So he decides to end it in an effigy battle. I call on the insidious arrow with its coat of lies, the poisonous slitherer ringed with all the cunning and ignominy in the world. <laughs> To beat him, you have to pick the right monster to battle his. As far as I can tell, the game itself doesn't have any hints, you just have to go with what you think would be the best option. The animation here is neat, and it's a fun but brief sequence. In his defeat, Laga has won the ring. For some reason, the music gets much louder in this section, but Albrecht curses the ring forever. Whoever wears it will only know death and misfortune, and then... Sure. The ring is entombed instead of a giant egg, and the giants think it's another trick. Getting it out is an excuse to include more puzzles, including a slide puzzle. Slide puzzles are for children, and they're completely incompatible with my brain. The idea of having to mess a part up to make it work again just doesn't compute. This is my kryptonite. But after entering that and how many days are in a year, you get the ring. Unbelievably, Votan tries to cross them again on this. 
until our narrator Charlotte, the voice of the Earth, reminds him that it's cursed. Then he gives it to the giants so they can squabble over it. Freya is released from the Whack Crystal Prison. I shall keep what I have earned by right. You do more puzzles on this combine piano. I don't know why. They don't say why you need to, but you have to. This heralds the beginning of a section that many adventure games have where it just gives up and you mainly get puzzles. It doesn't look cheap most of the time, but the story becomes so gutted that it feels empty even if you do know this story. When the four divided the universe between them, please no. they also laid down their laws. The five slave races then began paying for the opulence of this new order with their lives. Okay, I have to ask, who or what was Ring made for? The dialogue and themes seem way, way too heavy for kids, but there are so many certified Looney Tunes moments too. All while telling a German opera fantasy story in a science fiction skin with large parts of the story either removed or completely changed to make the game go forward. The budget on display is so high for what this is. But even now, knowing the story of Ring and getting the gist of what is supposed to be happening in scenes, it's still a lot of nonsense. If you don't know the story, it becomes impossible to follow. And don't forget these are stories inside a story, which is even more of a fever dream that's never elaborated on. Playing this without context actually made me feel crazy, in a way no other game has quite captured. There are games that are frustrating or hard or convoluted. This is a Necronomicon that makes sense to somebody. I would love to know what the plan was, like, who was the target audience? It sold a few hundred thousand copies, so some adventure game players did pick it up. Anyhow, our third story is Sigmund, and instead of having a long cutscene to set the stage, we just get this. The statue didn't prepare me for this. I did not click at that time in wolf sense. Nothing. There's nothing relevant if you could call it that until the end, so what are the highlights? The door to the house is locked, so Sigmund wanders through the woods. There are many shots of Sigmund wandering through the woods. He goes to his house and uses precious metals to forge a tiny man. The tiny man can be used to hand deliver rat poison to a rat living in the cupboard. I'm only assuming it's a rat. The sound indicates it might not be a rat. I think it's a rat. You cross a bridge to get to worms, but you can only see the worms if you use wolf vision, and you deploy the tiny golem man to get those so you can go fishing because the fish has a key in it. This leads to the ancient temple beneath which is your secret lair where you can get the boat out for the double deluxe hidden viking funeral, and honestly I'm forgetting the details, but somehow, somehow, all of this shit leads to opening the door. I don't have answers. You have a better view of the game than I do. <laughs> Whoever you may be, with a fairy, woman, or apparition, do not send me away. I am a tired and weary stranger. I must rest here. Damn relatable. This woman and home belong to Hunding, the warrior. But we gladly offer you his hospitality. Enter and rest, stranger. I will bring you something to drink. It turns out the mysterious woman has a fursona pin, just like Sigmund does. She is Siglinda, his long-lost sister, and he is very, very, very happy to see her. One of the many issues of this is that she's already married to Hunding, and he is not Hundigging it. What is he doing here? Stranger, I can easily recognize in you your errant and wild lineage. You are not welcome in my house. It's supposed to be dramatic, but Hunding's voice combined with that dialogue sounds like something straight out of Xavier Renegade Angel. Oh yes? And since when have you been taking such liberties? I feel greatly deceived. Well, so be it. You can spend the night here. But as an attentive host, I feel it my duty to warn you Tomorrow, at first light, I shall kill you. 
whether or not you have a weapon with which to defend yourself. What Hunding didn't count on was the tiny man slipping him rat poison so he could knock him out and then grab a sword out of the garden. Your reward for enduring this is... the budget cutscene. The evil curse has taken hold of me. My own wife goes against my will. Sigmund loved the wife. He embraced the sister. Twice he violated the sacred laws of marriage. In context of the story, Votan is pissed about his two children hooking up. There's a lot of extra context the game doesn't go into, so I won't either. He doesn't want Sigmund to die, but he has to. So he tells his daughter, a Valkyrie named Brunhilde, to make sure he dies and not interfere on his behalf, but she knows that he loves him, and will try to interfere and save him anyways. What we're actually seeing, I find a lot more interesting. Was this concept art they made into the cutscene from running out of time and budget? Was the animation team in a bind and Felipe heroically drew these up last second to patch things up? The world may never know, and it's the only cutscene in the game like this. It's also as messy as ever. They're trying to adapt way too much into this Frankenstein of a plot. What have you learnt, my son? Ah! He was in love with his own sister. I know, but that does not seem to me to be a bad thing. No, cut that! Fuck. What the fuck? I don't want to see Ish get his old man war ideas, and neither should you. Sure, the art depicting the deep lore looks incredible, but like I said before, it's poison. The only thing we saw for sure happen was a real estate deal and incest. You don't get to give me your essay on the real story after seeing that, and then try to tie it into the four at Tau Ceti and Thetans and whatever else you saw in your episode that day. Whole armada of rebels. They called him the Prophet. With his small army, he fought the four on every planet at every available opportunity. This could never be made today. Not with this budget. Not with this many big names behind it. Ring is so fascinating, but so painful. The more I look at it, the less I understand. Brunhilde's story is the last, and while I could get some parts of what we saw before, this section is based on near nothing and just stuff happening. Yes, my child. You have returned to the crossroads of worlds. There are few places like this that are shared between all civilizations, all ages, and all beliefs. I have to throw the ending forward. The task you are undertaking is an important one. The task is more surfing while the famous Valkyrie theme plays on loop. Not only is there less story here than Sigmund's section, but the puzzles here are the most moon logic they've ever been. Apparently, the idea was if you ever got stuck, you could return to the main area and start up a new story. So if players just found Rang too digestible, they could play the whole thing non-linearly. Each character's journey would be for more seasoned adventure gamers. I don't think the term seasoned really conveys what that means. Brunhilde's puzzles are for stage 4 adventure gamers. The kind where you come to a frozen sea, so you use your magic spear to set a bird on fire, which will melt the whole ocean. This causes a mummy to fall into the water, and lets you retrieve the plank of wood. Which, of course, you can't tell is an object. Then visit Van Darkholm and open the secret compartment to reveal this, and now you need the tiny man. Disassembling him, but then making sure to grid match the form of a human being. This will cause the bird to carry him away, and now you have the feather. It's just going between rooms, clicking at random, and watching Brunhilde hang ten. In the actual story, Brunhilde hid Siglinda, who's pregnant, and then Votan imprisons her. She's already hidden Siglinda off-screen. All this does is introduce new, more confusing forms of random shit. Why my father? Who are you? By your father. This is a new character called Nemesis, who you kill. He says he has a weapon born of Votan. Alright. The puzzles aren't even entertaining in a crazy way, they're just a mundane kind of insanity. The most credit you could give this is that she's sending more souls off to Valhalla. Which isn't good, but it's something, until things take a turn for the batshit. Solve the infinity puzzle to unlock Brunhilde's... ending? Oh, naughty thing! You've been bad again! Naturally, you don't care. You won't get the blame for this. I will. 
It's always my fault. Really, it's just not fair. If you start that again, I'll get a different doll. Ah, there you are. It's good what you've done. You must go and see your father now. He's angry at you, you know. But that's unfair too, because deep down, this is all his fault. Nemesis was right. Ow, pop. I destroyed Nemesis. <laughs> You're so naive. You did not destroy Nemesis. You have become Nemesis. I don't understand. Leave that for later. Not all secrets are for telling. First, go and see your father. Go! If there are any experts in the ring cycle, please tell me what the fuck is happening. Raise your head, miserable thing. You are no longer my daughter! I exclude you from the immortal lineage forever! And forever shall you be banished from my sight! Father! Wait, if that's the main area and Ish is back there, what's happening? I thought he was observing the story, but now he's right there. Did they have to use this area for some technical reason, or is this part of the story? Well, whatever the case, this is the part we were supposed to see much earlier. Votan imprisons her asleep in a treacherous area that only a worthy hero can get to. That whole level was completely pointless. What have you learned, my son? We learned the Earth was destroyed and that humans' memories are probed for entertainment by alien masters. The story of the ring is engraved into our DNA. It's sort of like the Animus, except instead of a person's memories, you can just watch the entire Nutcracker. The point of all of this is then revealed. The Four have just discovered an enemy and they need you to combat him. But I'm not a warrior. That is not what they're looking for. The greatest of strategists would be useless to them in the face of the threat that is fast approaching. So, what do they want of me? They wish to restore a god to the universe, to lead their people into a battle with all the fury and determination which only faith can ignite in man. Although this god is not a phantom, he exists. Or should I say, he will exist. For you see, Ish, this god will be you. Okay. Your final item is receiving death. Thank you, Votan. You won't regret it. I awoke as if from a dream. Did I regret waking? Or was I happy to see the dream end and a better day begin? I cannot say. I felt as if I had reached out and touched the secrets of the universe. I feel the same way. I feel like I saw something I shouldn't have. However, Ring was a four-part opera, and this only very loosely covered the first two parts. So all they can do is just reflect on Ish being God. I knew that the adventure would not stop here. Mm. But I was enjoying this unexpected moment of respite. With my eyes lost in the stars, and all my thoughts directed towards this dream of a warrior woman. Imprisoned by the flames. How funny you are. You play and you think that all is well, that it does not really concern you. But in the end, you will all be part of my game. Incomprehensible. Thank you. Is the girl on the TV the extra galactic threat and she can intrude into the story somehow? Now my headcanon is they tried to show Ring to Ish, and then this thing came and infiltrated it and just made it crazy to try and sabotage their new god. It's an actual crazy chamber. Even if you could perfectly follow the story, there's not a lot to come to Ring for. There are some cool environment designs and a few great character moments, but those are so far and few between the crazy. Most of the puzzles are deranged and without much context to make them really worth doing. And we're done with our best character far too early on. The game is currently not sold anywhere and hard to run and hard to find. It's not worth that journey. I mean, hell, it's not even the full story. That wouldn't be done until Ring 2. Ring got bad scores. Ring 2s were even worse. People who were mixed or even liked Ring hated it. Does the box spray corrosive acid on you or something? I tried a lot over the years. A friend sent a physical copy. But I can never get it to work, and that's fine because some mysteries are better left unsolved. Oh god. It works now. And I might not be able to get it working ever again. I've gutted my PC to play and record this, and 
I'm not going to do it again. I don't want to read comments or get emails about coming back to Ring 2. It has to be over. So to hell with it. Let's complete the cycle and find out why even the Ring enjoyers hate this one. The Ring must be destroyed. This is the first time I've seen him on the deck. <laughs> hey, Ish, do you think the warrior's already tired of his female prisoner? <laughs> Hold your tongue! Do you not know who this man is? Uh, he is a vassal of King Gunter, but I do not know his name. Ish, you who know better than I, Tell him who our hero is, that we are bringing back to the fortress of our overlord, and say also who it is he went to find, and why she is being kept in chains. This warrior, friends, is Siegfried, and the sword he carries by his side is Nothung, whose blade was forged by Wotan in Valhalla. But today, he is leading his beloved to her damned marriage as her page boy. Yet he does not know it. Poor man. So Ring 2 is supposed to continue part 3 of the cycle, but starts with a flash forward of part 4, and now Ish is just in the story. I didn't think Wagner could have a basement order, but that's the future we live in. The sound has gotten worse. The air! The air! Oh, does he think the metal will melt alone? Meme is back with a new voice, which makes him way more tolerable to listen to, but there's nothing to interact with and I can't even see my mouse pointer. It could be a graphical issue, which wouldn't surprise me, but I think I could... Oh my god, you, you're a person now? This is a big departure from the point and click we had before. How the screen is framed isn't great though, so let me fix that. You'll miss the item window, but that's not worth it. Now that we can all see, what the hell am I? I'm a child in what appears to be a deep sea mechanical gimp suit. It's like Rapture's big daddy prototype, the little boy. It looks like he's trapped in permanent Dota 2 posture. It looks like your life is now spent doing tasks for meme. I'm not sure if Albrecht knows about him having the boy slave yet, but I bet he'd have some cracks about it. Getting the bellows started looks like it should be an easy click drag, but it is not. The detection for it is horrible and it feels like trying to wrestle it over anything. After some musical forging where you strike the hammer after the note and not on it, the child causes a fire. No! Oh! Fire! Fire! Oh, I knew it. Why did the gentle dwarf waste his time looking after him all these years? Why? 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 Oh. Well then, why is he not going to do anything to put out the fire? He should take the water carrier near the pond. And quickly! The sound and ring was never great, but this feels so much like a void. There are barely any layers to the effects. I do prefer this over playing a point-and-click game. For now. The sound design is fantastic. Glad to see Ring come back to life. That suit is like the exact opposite of Enya. He must strengthen the ceiling. He must go out and take a trunk back from outside, close to the stumps. Quick! Well, at least the music is pleasant, and it does seem to loop a lot more smoothly. Ring 2 never has a literal torture chamber like the first game did. It's still pretty unique visually, except Ring 2 came out in 2003. That's five years after the original and 3D graphics were advancing at light speed back then. And man, they are really pulling back the camera. I guess because it's an open space, but you... Jesus Christ, are they gonna open Google Earth next? You could argue that Ring was very tunneled in and claustrophobic and this is trying to make things more obvious, but you might want to save that thought. Without a doubt, they desperately want the story to be more understood, as the menu now has spark notes. There's also no mention of the Galactic War, or the Four, so someone may have noticed that was completely insane and scrapped it entirely. But Ish is still around, just placed into the story as a narrator instead of Charlotte Rampling, who probably had much better things to do. It's clear Philippe is still on board and he's done production design for actual performances of Ring. It could be he's just a huge fan and his concept art for Ring 1 looks awesome, though they did chicken out not giving Albrecht that cod piece. Regardless if you own any concept art or sketches from either of the games, they're very valuable. It's rare for any game to have zero redeeming qualities. There are some neat aspects about these games, even if it takes years off my life to play them. Getting back to it, the trip to go get wood doesn't go well. The birds have freed the child from Andrew Ryan, welcome to Ring 2. That's our title drop. Confused? Read the spark notes. This is a terrible way to tell a story. 
Let's see how we do without it. I'm sure it'll be just fine. I'm now a babe in the woods, but a different kind of babe went up that tree root. That should be a good starting point. <laughs> child, my child, come and show me how strong and handsome you are. Come to me. Come. <laughs> I don't want to go up the tree anymore. You do not wish to come? Do I frighten you? Oh, come now. I am close by, as I've always been. Come. Ring 2 is taking a very weird, very French turn. I can't see her anyways because I don't have the tools to climb up. The method to do so is scattered around this huge field, and Ring 2 has a new nasty surprise. You can only hold one item at a time. That means if I need to combine it with another item, I'll need to physically go there and do it right there. Otherwise, you'll pick up the new item and leave the old one. This has disaster written all over it, especially with how big this area is. Thankfully, sometimes the items do have a shine on them, which is something, but it means having the wrong item for a puzzle sends you trekking around again. For this one, you need to free a bull so it can pull apart some branches and reveal your prize. Even with the one item restriction, this is... decent. I cut out the bull, tied the rope to a hook, put that on the bull, lured it over with a flower. I understood what I did and felt kind of satisfied getting the dagger, instead of feeling pure despair wondering what I was witnessing. These moments were so rare in the first game, and it's a good sign. Oh, fuck. You? Who are you to dare to rob the dead? And with me? You would take that risk? <laughs> we were so close. It was so easy. Oh well, let's see what this trusty lady has. Come closer. Do not be afraid. Yes, like that. <laughs> Good. Tell me, do you remember me? My face? My gaze? The beating of my heart? Does none of this evoke the slightest memory? The dwarf had promised to be your tutor. I see he kept his word, but he chose to teach you the most perfect ignorance. In your soul, I can tell that he kept everything from you, even your name. A name? Only Mime has a name. Nothing else in the world exists but him. Oh, now he's Mime. He was Meme in Ring, so I'm gonna keep that. I'm fairly sure it's supposed to be Mima, but my brain is so rotted from these games, I'll never remember the names correctly ever again. Who am I gonna talk about the Ring of the Nibelungen to in real life? Who cares? Knowledge of these games is not something I take pride in. This is a curse. Look, here is the border. Decide to cross it, and you will lose your certainties. That I promise you. I can see pain and anguish. Death, even. It's a redesign, but clearly Siglinda. She says he must go out into the world and learn the truth, or forever be trapped in Plato's meme cave. The child is Siegfried, and the entire game only follows him. So instead of bouncing around, we'll have something more consistent and straightforward. Let's cross the border into the real world. Or maybe just die. Ring 2 has introduced some platforming. It's one of the most pathetic jumps I've seen in a game. It's not even a jump, really. It's more like a frolic. I didn't know you could condense frolicking into a single unit, but there it is. After frolicking over the gap, now you can go into the real world. There's some drone cam footage of Siegfried, and now we're in the world. The world is a... scary place. The first of Siegfried's trials is getting past the spider, which is easy if you take it slow. After that, you find a strange altar, which is going to need some objects. This is where things get trickier. Here, Log, God of Trickery awaits you. If you know the virtues of vigilance, walk confidently towards him. He gives his gifts to those who know how to listen to the signs. <laughs> The sign is listening for the calling of crows. A certain sound indicates the fire in the tunnel will stop for a moment, and once you figure it out, it's pretty straightforward, though it still takes a while. We see a statue of our old friend Log, and grab his bowl. First item down, fairly painlessly. But it doesn't go on the altar, it just makes a new triangle. So it should form the same symbol on the dagger. One more to go. This one is far down a path among a bunch of lava pools. It's worth the jog though, because you end up getting fucking Mjolnir. This is good timing too, because now the way back is filled with demons. You can't use the item on them, there's no way to fight them, and I looked in the manual and there is an attack button, but it doesn't do anything. 
All you can do is stand there and die. So I loaded up an old save, and now I can rotate. Restarting the game, now I can rotate and aim and throw it. Which I thought would be it, but playing it again for this video, you're locked in place and just use the attack button and always hit the demons. This section is bugged to hell with one L and back, but I successfully got rid of Mjolnir. I'm not sure about that. Votan, the protector and guide of those for whom even the sun at noon does not obscure the stars in the sky. Oh Christ, is that the city from Scorn? Well, no, because it looks too mechanical, but it's way more horrific for me because it has a slide puzzle. I hate slide puzzles so much. This leads to the Cavern of Alchemy, or something like that. It involves putting elements in a device and speeding up or slowing down the flow of time to age them. This also sounds like it should be awful, but it's also not too bad. There are straightforward instructions, you just have to be careful advancing the sands of time. As the materials age, Siegfried does too, and if you don't stop the sands from falling, then he will as well. When you do it right and get a diamond, something happens. I even brought this up again. It doesn't help. You're back to child form and discover a giant air conditioner. Or maybe a big vent? Who knows? You have crossed the worlds of the gods, giants, and dwarves. Now that you face the world of men, decide whether you will be a hero or a slave there. <laughs> this kid just keeps getting decked by fireballs. Shame on you. You are nothing but a meal for rats. The secret to this one is to throw rocks into the AC so that the wind comes up and will deflect away his fireballs. You have to time it just before his attack is finished charging or else you're going to get decked again. The wind won't last forever, but each time you thermostat parry him, your status in the world will go up. Slave. Such will be your rank among men and they will leave you the same scraps as they give their dogs. Your days will be grey and your wife ugly, but you shall live without begging. You have to do this six times, and if you screw up, you go back. Is this a boss fight? I can't tell. I didn't think this story would take me to fighting a stand user with an air conditioner, but here we are. Anyways, you grind your way from being a slave to the king and hero of men. All right. Finally, we're at the Cave of Crushing Pillars and Depressed Mystical Trees. Your sharp blade. Why use it to destroy my last refuge? My life was nothing but a dull labor. Have I not deserved the gentle torpor of the forgotten? I killed in the shadows for a bronze coin, a leather belt, or a piece of bread. Why has my tomb been lacerated? Did I not obey my destiny by being a faithful and subservient woman? Boy, those thumping of the pillars are really adding a lot to this. If you've never lived in an apartment, this is what it's like to watch anything. Luckily, it's not too hard to cross it. And really, it's kind of weird how easy it is to get across. That's it. Hey! Ah, there it is. But I still have the dagger, which does not count as an item. A warrior. But as a warrior holding a weapon bearing the sign of Votan. One of Votan's warriors, the gods of gods. He who denies us entry to his kingdom. In Valhalla, fortress of the asses, where fearless warriors dine. That's enough of that. 
These waters finally morph Siegfried out of being a child. He has now digivolved into an awful fusion of Kratos and Caillou. Meanwhile... Do not fear me, creature. I could have broken your neck if I wanted to. But I'm nothing but a simple wanderer. Legget Lanius shows up and hassles Meme for a while. He reveals that he's related to Siegfried, and when the child returns, he will surely kill Meme. This goes on longer than it needs to, but you could say the same about the actual play. He shall no fear no longer! He shall no fear no longer! And he shall kill me! He shall no fear no longer! <laughs> fear no longer! I think he'll fear no longer. Back with Siegfried, a Panzer Bjorn is being harassed by several undead warriors. If you want to know how far off the range we are, finding a bear is one of the first things that happens in the actual story. There is a Looney Tunes rock up here to knock over, so that makes it simple. Oh, shit. Your horns pierce my soul! The key is to adjust the stick, which can't go too far to the left, but it'll work. This leaves a single skeleton, which the bear still can't take on his own. If you're too slow, the bear will die, but if you go in and try to fight it yourself, the skeleton will murder you. The answer here is to lure it into the ancient, powerful... Big Magnet. <laughs> Man, this is fucking weird. I'm just realizing that. Valiantly, you have crossed the lands of gods, giants, dwarves, men, and the dead. Now it is only right that you should enjoy your name and live up to it too. Here you are, a man at last. Now you can make the inheritance of your ancestors your own. Find Notham, the sword I broke on Votan's spear, and forge it again. With it, you will become unrivaled among men and you will herald a new age, one where they may plant their banners in the firmaments of the gods. We, your parents, Sigmund and Siglind, have named you Siegfried. Like us, you belong to the line of the Valsungs. So Sigmund has gone through one hell of a redesign too, not to mention we saw him die. Both his parents died. Siglinda just died giving birth off screen and everyone talks about them like they're dead, but because things are such a mess, they're now exposition ghosts. Go get the sword from Meme, you little weirdo. This is how a human knocks. No, he must leave. Mine can do nothing more for him. Nothing more, nothing more, nothing more. Okay, Mr. Meme, meet Bear. <laughs> now we're in. You have to hunt around for the little dude since the bear exploding through his door alarmed him, but he doesn't have many places to hide. <laughs> He's strangling his good companion, strangling him! Is this his reward for the care he's lavished on him? Uh, washing the swaddling clothes of all three of them, bed hewn from fresh granite and mud soup with its fleshy tadpoles. Uh, is he not grateful for all that to mime? Uh, his father and his mother at once. Uh. Enough, stupid dwarf. He says he doesn't know anything about the sword, but that's what Bear is for. <laughs> <laughs> enough! Enough! He will speak! He will speak! Oh, please, stop the pain! He still doesn't. <laughs> he will tell! He will tell everything! Meme claims he chucked the sword out in the woods. So Siegfried forces him to take him there, but for some reason leaves the bear behind. These games are full of bad calls. This way! But Mime cannot really remember any longer! Oh. In any case, he does not want to go any further! Oh no! No, he will not go any further! <laughs> it's still not clear what any of this will accomplish. Where on earth is all of this going? Well, time to find the sword. Oh! It turns out the trees are electrified, so I need to keep my distance here. Oh! It Looking around, the spiders are mechanical and their venom can be exploited. That solves the tree problem. Ouch. I'm not sure what that was about, but it did the trick. Now you can crawl through and get- oh! 
Oh my god, I don't know what I did. It may have just spit me out at the wrong angle, so this might do it. What the fuck even happened that time? And would you look at that? It was a bug after all. Now that I'm clear of the hell trees... <sighs> Lure the spider over, it dies to the tree, and now, now you can finally cross. For some reason, I'm thinking about that death screen a lot. Is that one of the most dramatic game over screens in a video game? I'm just thankful it's relatively brief and not something like too human. There's a bridge in your way that gets weirdly larger as you cross it. Or maybe you're shrinking down. You could be crossing into the land of the giants, but Sigmund said you beat that already. Maybe he doesn't know what he's talking about. Nobody knows what they're talking about. At least the door just opens without a slide puzzle. Okay. Wait for the spider to pass. Who would think there would be a sneaking section? Ring 2 really has it all, huh? Were they just throwing everything at the wall to see what- Oh, fuck. After many trials, I get past the spider and see what's happening. But it almost caught up with me. So, Dwarf, will you tell me about this treasure? Oh, thank God it's Albrick. Finally, a good character. We've been lacking the bite and power he brings, and I'm so relieved for more one-liners. It is Alberish, King of the Dwarves, whom you are addressing. Release me, or my people will avenge me, and your filthy beasts will die of indigestion, eating the remains of your bloated and ugly corpse. What? No! What happened? They recast him? I mean, the original voice actor had a lot going on in this period, but this is devastating. The giant's talking about his track record like the dude we know, but he's just not matching up to it. Besides the change in voice, his own zoning sucks too. Heh, <laughs> it was easy. They are too sure of themselves. This isn't Alberic or Alberish. This is Albapore. The giant wants the gold, but as we know, he no longer has it. No, for pity's sake, I know nothing more, I swear. Have mercy on Alberish, King of the Dwarfs, Deceiver of the Rhine Harlots. I shall be your jester, your clown. I will make you laugh. I will serve you, but mercy, mercy. And what has desire given me so far? Merely mockery, scorn, and a bitter taste in my mouth. I thus take my leave, light-hearted, abandoning desire to fools, so that I can pursue higher ambitions. <laughs> Was this a Dark Seed 2 situation? I feel like there's a story here. Regardless, Albrick cries so hard that the spider no longer wants to eat him because his body is covered in salt. Is this the main reason why Ring 1 fans hated Ring 2? Honestly, that is so justified. The giant leaves, and now you're free to explore. Oh! Hey, you! I don't know what you are doing here, but I implore you, save me from the terrible fate that awaits me. I am the king of the dwarves. If you free me, I can do many things for you. No, I can do everything for you. Siegfried only cares about the sword, which the fake Albrecht has seen. If Siegfried gets the key and frees him from his cage, he'll tell him where it is. Navigating around the cliff down is bizarrely perilous. You can just fall through the ground and die if the game decides it. Albrecht did accidentally and pathetically stumble upon a spider defense. If you crawl up into a storage bin, you can cover yourself in salt. It's also worth mentioning even older Siegfried still has the frolic. I guess I've been feeling covered in salt this whole time, huh? Well, after that it gets trickier, like some ladders that you can't actually climb because they bug out sometimes, so I had to restart the game again. Oh! I wander this room for far too long and finally take a frolic of faith and see what I did wrong. These games will never stop surprising me. Tell me where the sword is. In the trunk, near the table, in there. Now put the key in the lock and turn it. Unfortunately, the giant is back and Albrecht is not freed. He'll have to talk his way out. You have convinced me. I shall tell you how you can seize the gold I took from the Rhine Maidens, but you are going to have to be brave. But I am brave. <laughs> you will have to be magnificent. I am magnificent. You will have to be... Superb. But I am super- Alright, come on. The dwarf convinces the giant that the gold was so bright he had to practice staring at the sun in order to endure it. This easily convinces him to try. Love me gold? Simple as. If you did it, then so can I, and I shall do it better. No, you cannot do it. Yes, I can. Oh, really? Then show me. 
stand by the window and look at the sun as long as you can without closing your eyes. And be careful, I will be watching you. This gets dark. It doesn't hurt. Think of the gold. Think of the gold. The sky is darkening, dwarf. Clouds are gathering. It does not matter. Keep going. The, the giant might end up needing a seeing eye spider. I can't imagine how the real Albrecht would have handled this part, but I would have loved to see it. Once he's blind, it's easy to get the sword, free the dwarf, and get out. Alberish! Alberish! A curse on your filthy race! Alberish! Come back! Nobody is hurting me. Nobody is telling me to stare at the sun. You do your work and reforge my father's sword for me. It cannot do it! The gentle blacksmith cannot do it! Yeah, fine, I'll do it. Caillou's going to the zoo whenever he wants now. He demands to find a worthy opponent he could slay to become a hero. Meme directs him towards Fafner, who still has the ring. You remember Fafner, right? And you have more than abused our patience. Well, Fafner is now a dragon and his lair looks fucking awesome. Why is he a dragon now? It helps him guard the ring better. Actually, since I mentioned Lord of the Rings earlier, you might be wondering if this actually inspired any of Tolkien's work. He has answered this directly, saying, Both rings were round, and there the resemblance ceased. It's a neat lair, and actually knowing where things are building up to is a great improvement. Though this has come at a great loss because now Siegfried's death scream is gone. It also has one of the most needlessly long booby traps, with the least satisfying payoff I've seen in a game. You cross the don't break the ice tiles, then have to walk all the way back and wait for this spike wall to cross. Holy shit. This genuinely feels like a bit. That's the sound it makes, huh? There is an altar with a slot for a shield in the cave, not to actually fight the dragon with, but to reflect light into his eyes to wake him up. I wouldn't call it a dragon, but it is a cool design. And unlike some of the other overhauls, it actually calls back to how he looked in Ring 1. It's a fun detail. I sense that you are curious and desire, but not for the gold, not the gold. You, you are looking for something else. It all built up to this. There's no music. There are barely any sound effects at all. I did look it up. It's not bugged. This is how it is. The secret is he has the ring. Siegfried has done it. He levels up. He does get the ring, but that was one of the worst dragon slayings I've ever seen. Outside, a talking bird warns Siegfried about the ring. It knows about him because it's seen his life weaved by the Norns. Norns are the Norse version of the Fate Weavers. We've seen these before. What's more pressing is Meme coming with Detective Halligan's own brand. Before you leave, will you share the sacred mead with mine? <laughs> will you at least show gratitude for all the care he has lavished on you? That's not weird editing, it does play the sip sound before he actually sips it. Mm. 
We've been seeing the Norns the whole time. Right there. So what you should do is not take the drink. Enough! Oh, I should have killed him when he was still floating in his mother's entrails. No! No! Abrupt? And so... Oh, right. Ish. Siegfried set off in search of the Hinderfjall Rock. That mysterious place Fafner spoke of just before his death. A marvelous treasure awaited there. More rare and more intoxicating than gold. Brunhilde. The Valkyrie, beloved daughter of Botan, the god whose authority she once ignored and whose decree she disobeyed. It's a stealth section and the camera has never been farther. There is a bit of music punishment here since one part is way louder and more distorted than anything else. It'll sneak up on you as it loops. Ugh. It is some jank moving through these screens and the perspective is all over the place. You auto crouch behind certain objects, but you're not actually hidden in most of them. If you do get caught, you'll draw a sword like you can fight, but you know how this goes. It's an odd little section because you don't sneak for too long. When you do use your sword, it's to break into their storehouse and grab a bomb. It's the day of reckoning for the pig people. With the fence down, you can go deep into their city and penetrate the dungeon holding Brunhilde. This part requires the fastest reflexes in the game, but it's more jank than difficult. We're 100% black. Me too. Frolic through the traps and you're one step closer to Brunhilde. I've gotta say, the speed of events is really picking up pace now. If you hadn't guessed it by now, this dude is Votan in a dramatically different redesign. I mean, if you know who Odin is, you can actually recognize him now compared to before. Here, he wants to regale Siegfried with the tale of Brunhilde. We've seen it already. I would rather not relive that, so time for a new incredible fight scene. Do you think I know, Fia? What is going through his mind? More importantly, what music was supposed to play here? This and Fafner's had to have had one planned, but what happened? Again, the world may never know. It's also not clear how to free Brunhilde from this Giger torture coffin. If you do something incorrectly, the death timer starts, and then... There are some clues scattered around the room. Large statues with numbers and runic symbols. These are genuine runes too, so they correspond to actual numbers. There are a bunch of these, and I started jotting them down on a notepad to keep track. My theory was, in the manual, there would be a key for the runes and their numbers, and this was some kind of disc protection. Figure out all the numbers in the statues, and they will somehow correspond to the numbers on Brunhilde. After spending too much time trying to figure out what this could mean, it's the Fibonacci sequence. Which, in this case, is a fancy way of saying, start with the little numbers and work your way up. God damn it. She's also not monstrous anymore, and the pig people love them. This looks like it could and should be the end, but there's still a bit to go. They cut away from this scene for this. I see that a proud lineage has established its domain here. But what deed has the master of this place ever performed to deserve this gold and these flags that he shamelessly puts on display? How dare you? Leave, Hagen. I know who you are, Valsung, but your glorious past does not allow you to be so condescending. We foresaw your visit a long time ago. We raised our flags to honor your arrival. All this pomp and circumstance is a veil to cover your fear in my presence. We are now completely off the range. All of Ring 2 so far has been a loose Zyprexa adaptation of part 3 of the play, aptly called Siegfried. The final part is called Twilight of the Gods, like the game. They are trying to put the entire final part and large parts of part 3 into the last 15 minutes of the game. The lack of music and some cutscenes already made it clear that time was running short, but this is a real rush job. 
Trying to give any context to this is absolutely meaningless. My biggest question had been who is Ring for, but that is dwarfed by who is Ring 2 for? It's coming out five years after the original game and not really completing the story. It's limping over to A ending and throwing elements in at random. Maybe they thought it could still sell as well as Ring 1 somehow? I don't know. Well, the king says you should find tears of true loss, an object of true love, and a piece of Norton thread. If he covers himself in this elixir, Charlotte Rampling will return and reveal everything to him. But it's all a trick because when he fails, everyone in the court will get something they want. To find tears of true loss, Siegfried sets out to find the Rhine Maidens. And the gold! The Rhine gold! You get tears from one maiden, but it won't be so simple because you need more tears. They're in great pain because they were rejected by Alberic and lost the gold. While one sister wallows in sorrow, the other isn't going to take it. Find Alberic and deliver him to my angry justice. <laughs> well, Siegfried hasn't been to Nibelheim yet, but hopefully Glug won't be there. Ring, oh. ring, beautiful ring. It is me, Alberic. Don't you remember? It is I who snatched you from the icy depths and the watch of the fishwoman. I who brought you into the gaze of the creatures of the earth. Ring, ring, show yourself. I know you are there. Do not be afraid. Come to Alberish, king of dwarfs. Ah! He's a round little man, but he moves like a panther. He's come all the way back to the dragon's lair, and every time you get close to the little weirdo, he's already gone. You'll never catch him normally this way, so instead, you have to cut off his escape and catch him from the other side. I recognize you. Leave me alone. Let me go. Whether he's dead or not is ambiguous. You get more tears, and man, the editing is becoming breakneck. Like, if you thought that was abrupt, check this out. Valsung. Edda now wants you to find a piece of the Norns' thread. There's the Norns. There's the fates. You're just... Here we are. They cannot wait for this to be over, but have put the worst puzzle yet as the final obstacle. It is a time-morphing tightrope walk. I'm so glad to finally be here. The thing is, on paper, this shouldn't be that bad. Each color on the strip represents time going forward or backwards or staying still. The issue is, Ring 2 already has atrocious movement and collision detection, and I've already fallen through surfaces randomly, so the chance of that happening here is already a lot higher. Except here, when you change age, the game generates a new model, which it can't place directly on top of where you were, and will often just throw you off into fucking space. Sometimes your model won't change, you just get the smoke and get chucked off into the void. To make it worse, every time you return, you get a narration of the king explaining how it works. Valsung. Edda now wants you to find a piece- What the- what the fuck happened there? I wasn't too old and got in the old line, this is the instant death line. Valsung. Edda now wants you to find a piece of the Norn's thread. Works just fine You're now. You're already heading in the right direction. Ripe corn will lead you to youth, but... Valsung. Valsung. Finally, I get past it and meet my tormentors. The fates actually look pretty rad, but I couldn't appreciate that in the moment. The cries of Valsung will follow me into my grave. I am son of Sigmund and Sigalinda, the last of the Valsungs. Help me. Like my sisters, I am a daughter of Erda. Why would I want to help you? We have no need of you to continue our work. None of them want to be involved in this, which is fair, but a problem. Stop breaking destinies for a moment, Cutter. You must listen to me. Deciding when to stop a life is not an easy task. Do not disturb my work. This seems like an impasse. How do you defeat the fates? It turns out the answer is throwing pocket sand at their seeing eye spider and then introducing it to Nothung. Uh, what did he do? What did he do? Now that they're blinded, Siegfried finds the thread of his own fate. Where can things go from here? Did Siegfried manage to fool the Norns? Oh yes. But he was not the liar in this story. It was Hagen. Siegfried in Hagen's hands? Oh, Hagen, he was there for a second. By the snake? And what happened? Siegfried returned to the court of the Jibichungens, and from his finger took the ring that Brunhilde had given to him. 
Hagen made a potion of forgetting from Most of our ending is Ish saying what happened off screen. They'll even introduce a new setting for him to show up and say more things that happened off screen. Siegfried and Brunhilde are now going to marry the wrong people. Uh oh. Come closer, warrior. It is I who rule the tides of Yggdrasil and wash the oceans over the edges of the world. That's not Charlotte. Erda, whose advice you seek. Erda? I do not know that name. Erda's a galactic Teletubby or something. Fuck it. Hagen shows up, Siegfried dies. And after many, many painful hours, I've come to the ending. A funeral is held for Siegfried, where they reuse his child model to ask who he was, and Brunhilde ends the tale with what else? Cree for the gods. The end of one world. More surfing. The birth of another. Forever, perhaps. <laughs> That's it. Fuck it. Who is the TV girl? Who cares? I would love to know the story behind how Ring was committed, but until then, all I have is madness. Somewhere out there is a diehard Wagner fan who's probably been vomiting over themselves and screeching by now. The story summary is also useless and mentions a gnome? Is that a dwarf mistranslation or was there a gnome? It doesn't matter. See, last year a lot of people said that Anonymous Agony was torture. They couldn't wrap their brain around it and were thinking about it for weeks. Well, this was mine. This is the kind of game that sticks with me in the worst way. Like, sure, Ring 2 was rushed and probably cheaper than the original, but besides what they did to Albrecht's character, is it really that worse than Ring 1? Having played both back-to-back -back multiple times now, I don't think so. I think at this point people had woken up more to how awful this genre could be at points and were less forgiving. I did find Ring 2 to be a lot more playable, it doesn't scream for a guide like Ring 1 does, but it never reaches the original's highest highs or its lowest lows. I think about it so much because while it also has rushed out parts, it also means something to somebody. As it is, it feels like peering at forbidden knowledge I was never meant to understand. If you made it this far, then thank you and congratulations. I don't know how long this video will be up for. So it might need even weirder alterations than I've already done for it to stay up, but it might just disappear. If that happens, just chalk it up to a bad dream. Well, happy Halloween. I'll see you next time if I survive to then. I can only hope that one day, the ring will have a proper conclusion. Have I seen the news about the new Marathon game? Yes. I've seen people unhappy that it's a Marathon Tarkov instead of a reboot, but I don't know how you reboot Marathon today and keep it for a modern audience. Like, having voice acting for the videos was fun and convenient, but the fact all the characters talk through text and even little things like repeated symbols or formatting can mean a whole lot, I could never see them keeping that aspect as the core of the game. Little blurbs, maybe, but not your main storytelling device. For now, I'm just more curious of what they're doing. How are the coyotes? I haven't seen or heard from them since the beginning of the year, I think. They usually come back around this time of year. Favorite Halloween costume I've worn. There was this one year I went trick-or-treating as Buzz Lightyear, and I vaguely remember other kids were crying a lot or something like that. I thought maybe somehow my costume was scary, and it turned out whenever I was turning around I was decking people with my wings. I don't remember what they were made of, but it was a different time. Would I do work in a game whether it's design or consulting, etc.? I've done a good amount of consulting now, free and paid. I should clarify this, Developers like getting feedback on the game. Giving feedback on how you think the process should work is almost always a dipshit idea. Let's pretend I'm a commercial airline reviewer. I say, oh, the seats should be bigger and more comfortable, and maybe they should have seat warmers too and be fancy. The plane should be faster because I've ridden faster planes and I know how a jet engine works, but I don't know how much power will be drawn or weight added by fancy seats. Fuel efficiency? Can the plane even be wired that way? What will need to be removed from the plane? I don't fucking know. Here's what sucked about the flight and what could be better. I'm not going to tell you how to build a plane. 